In this section, we will focus our discussions on the most common secondary structural features in proteins. In the previous lecture, we learned that the carbon-nitrogen bond in the amide linkage is planar in structure and rigid, and that the R groups favor the trans conformation, except for proline, which favors the cis conformation. This rigidity within the protein backbone limits the folding potential and patterns of the resulting protein. However, the bonds around the alpha carbon can freely rotate and contribute to the flexibility and unique folding patterns seen within the proteins. To evaluate these possible rotation patterns that can arise around the alpha carbon, the torsion angles phi and psi are commonly measured. Torsion angles phi measures the rotation around the alpha carbon nitrogen bond by evaluating the angles between the two neighboring carbonyl groups. You can evaluate these when looking directly down the alpha carbon nitrogen bond into the plane of the paper. Conversely, the torsion angles of psi measures the rotation around the alpha carbon carbon linkage with the carbonyl group. For these angles, we will evaluate the rotation between the two neighboring nitrogen atoms. Again, when you're looking directly down the carbon-carbon bond. The Ramachandran plot graphs the phi and psi angles together and shows the favorable bond angles which are shown in yellow, and the highly favorable angles that are shown in red. The bond angles for some of the most common secondary protein structures are indicated and include beta pleated sheets and the right-handed alpha helix. We will talk about the details of these structural motifs over the next few slides. The most favorable phi and psi angles give rise to repeating localized structures that form recognizable features in the protein. These include the beta pleated sheet and alpha helix. These structures are held together by hydrogen bonding with the backbone of the protein structure. The R groups are not involved in the hydrogen bonding within the structure, but they can have an effect on the structure due to the steric hindrance or hydrophobic hydrophilic characteristics within that protein region. So let's look at the alpha helix structure in a little bit more detail. A total of 3.6 amino acids are required to form one turn of an alpha helix. Hydrogen bonding between the carbonyl oxygen and the nitrogen of the fourth amino acid stabilize the helical structure. In figure A, the black atoms are the carbon atoms, gray are the carbonyl carbons, Red is oxygen, and blue is nitrogen. The R groups are shown in green, and the light purple are the hydrogen atoms. Note that the R groups are on the outside of the alpha helical structure. Figure B shows an expanded side view and top view, with both the linear structure and the space filling models. In most proteins, the average number of amino acids involved in an alpha helix is 11, which will give a total of three turns. The left-handed alpha helix, although allowed from inspections of the Ramachandran plot, is rarely observed, since the amino acids used to build protein structure are the L amino acids and are biased towards forming the right-handed helix. When left-handed helices do form, they are often critical for the correct protein folding, protein stability, or are directly involved in the formation of the active site. The left-handed helix shown is orange and is stabilized by these two disulfide bridges, shown in yellow. As you can see from our space filling models, the core of the alpha helix is tightly packed there are no holes or pores in the helix. All of the R groups extend outward and away from the helix axis. The R groups can influence the folding of proteins based on their characteristics and help to determine localized properties of the protein within the region. 
Hydrophilic portions of the helix can interact with water environments, while hydrophobic regions may fold to the inside of the protein to be shielded away from the water, or may be found on alpha helices that span the plasma membrane. Some helices, such as the one shown, has one hydrophilic face and one hydrophobic face, mediating these differential interacting surfaces. Others may be fully hydrophobic or show hydrophobic and hydrophilic orientations in the opposite directions, depending on their localization and function. Some amino acids are more commonly found in alpha helices than others. Here are the amino acids that are typically not found in the alpha helical structures. Glycine is typically too small and conformationally flexible to be found with high frequency in alpha helices, while proline is too rigid and in the cis conformation. Proline often disrupts helical structures by causing bends in the protein. Some amino acids with side chains that can hydrogen bond, such as serine, asparagine, and aspartic acid appear to act as competitors of main chain hydrogen bonding donor and acceptors and destabilize the alpha helices. Early branching groups such as those in valine and isoleucine destable the alpha helix due to steric interactions on the bulky side chains with the helix backbone. Now let's shift our attention and talk about the beta pleated sheet. In the beta pleated sheet, the pleats are formed by hydrogen bonds between the backbone of the polypeptide chain. The R groups extend below and above the beta pleated sheet folds in the trans conformation. The beta pleated sheet can be oriented in the parallel or the anti parallel orientations. The direction of the arrow indicates the orientation of the protein with the arrow running in the N to C direction. N to C. In parallel pleated sheets, both strands of the protein are in the N to C orientation next to each other. In anti-parallel orientation, one strand is in the N to C orientation, while the other strand is flipped in the opposite orientation, running in the other direction. Hydrogen bonding can stabilize both the anti-parallel formation or the parallel formation of the beta pleated sheet structures. Other important secondary structures include turns, loops, hairpins, and flexible linkers. There are many different classifications of turns within protein structures, including alpha turns, beta turns, gamma turns, delta turns, and pi turns. Beta turns are the most common form and are shown here. They typically contain four amino acid residues. Proline and glycine are commonly found in the turn motif, as the cis conformation of proline favors sharper conformational bends, while the minimal glycine side chain allows for tighter packing of the amino acids to favor the turn structure. In the next section, we will see how secondary structural elements combine to form supersecondary structures and motifs.